Do you have pain at the bottom of your big toe joint? This is called sesamoiditis, the inflammation of your sesamoids. I'm gonna show you the absolute best ways to take care of your sesamoid pain. So when you bend your big toe joint like this and it's pressing down, that's sesamoiditis. That's first metatarsal phalangeal joint pain. That's a mouthful. We're gonna show you the best taping, the best treatments, how to know for sure if it's your first metatarsal phalangeal joint and sesamoid. We've got you covered starting right now. This is the sesamoid region. These are your two sesamoids. So you have your tibial sesamoid and your fibular sesamoid. What happens is when you land on this area, it creates pressure on the sesamoid region. So when your big toe is bent up, you can see that's a high pressure area. When you're landing on the front of this area right here with your big toe bent up, you're jamming your sesamoid bones. This can create a lot of pain. So what's common is you could break the tibial sesamoid or the fibular sesamoid. So sesamoiditis is when these two bones right here are inflamed. The next step, number two, is when you can develop a stress fracture within them. So that's a fracture of the sesamoid. Or number three, you could dislocate or displace the sesamoids. This can happen in a severe injury like uh, a severe turf toe injury, a fracture, or a pretty significant severe bunion can do this as well. So your sesamoids are two P-shaped bones. They bear the weight on your big toe joint. So when your big toe joint bends down like this, it's your sesamoids that are really absorbing it. They act as a pulley on your flexor hallucis brevis muscle to help you push down on your big toe joint. Have you ever watched Titanic with Kate Winslet when she's doing that big toe stand? That's the sesamoids. If she didn't have sesamoids, she wouldn't be able to dance. and She'd probably be in the hospital. That's what they do. They let you have that type of leverage on your big toe joint. They're like the patella on your knee, but smaller and in your foot. They are most injured in running, basketball, running, jumping sports. So when you're landing like this frequently, that's your sesamoids absorbing it. There are three sesamoid type related injuries. Number one is turf toe injury. So when you bend your big toe up, so when you land and your foot loads like that, you can tear the muscles and ligaments that insert into the sesamoids. That's a turf toe. If that's what you have, click here. That's our turf toe treatment guide. Number two is a fractured sesamoid. So if you land on your big toe joint, you can actually break one of these two joints. That's something where you have to see your podiatrist, you have to get an x-ray, possibly better imaging like a MRI or an ultrasound, and very likely you have to be immobilized. So that's a boot, a surgical shoe, or a special cutout insert that we're gonna talk about later in this video. And then number three is sesamoiditis. That's just agitated inflamed sesamoids. So just like you can get tendonitis, you can get sesamoiditis, which is inflammation of the sesamoids. How will sesamoiditis feel? You're gonna feel like on the bottom of your big toe joint. You're gonna feel like you have bruising, an injury, agitation. You won't be able to bend your big toe upward, as I showed. That's signs that you have sesamoiditis. It'll feel like you're walking on a big lump at the bottom right here. Preventing the big toe from bending up will stop your sesamoiditis pain. A really simple and easy way to mobilize the sesamoids is to get a piece of tape, rip it in half, and in opposing circles, so right there, I just wanna get that wrinkle out of the tape, make sure it doesn't crinkle or that's gonna bother you. But simply holding it down, so see how the toe is straight and not bent up? Those two pieces of tape in opposite directions will now prevent it from bending up. So adding a second layer will make it even stronger. And you can see right there, there's no way that toe's gonna really bend up. See, I'm trying to push it up right there, but it won't bend up. So as I'm walking, it goes up about 10 to 15 degrees rather than the 90 degrees when you're jumping or pushing off. But make sure you don't have hair on your legs. Number two, you could potentially inject the joint with a uh, numbing medication to make sure that's where your pain is coming from. This is called the diagnostic injection. If the joint's what's hurting, that means uh, and it goes away with the injection, that means the joint was actually the problem and the cause of this issue. Number two, the reason this happens is 
people generally have a tight calf muscle and that prevents your foot from being able to bend up. If your foot's not able to bend up, you're putting more pressure in the ball of the foot. This can cause something called metatarsalgia and here's our guide for metatarsalgia if you have a tight calf muscle. But great things to do are stretch your calf, massage roll your calf, get that loosened up. So your lower back, your hamstrings, your calf muscles, that will stop pressure in the back. But our number one way to treat this is, the number one way to treat this is get a good running shoe and get a great orthotic. So here's an old orthotic right here, but look at that arch on there. That is a massive arch. That This one specifically has a cutout for the big toe joint. So you can see down here, there's a cutout right here of hard plastic. So when your sesamoids load up onto there, you can see right here, it creates a groove for that big toe joint to drop into. So down in the links, I have some great orthotics and a link to our shoe guide, but the simplest and easiest way is to get a great shoe and a great insert. And you also want a great house slipper and a great sandal. You pretty much never want to be walking around barefoot until your sesamoiditis heals. And the reason I say that is you don't want to walk around for uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays in a good shoe while you're at work and then the rest of the time walk around barefoot at your house bruising up your sesamoid bones right here. If you're always in something like this, this is the equivalent of wearing a cast except you're comfortable in a good pair of shoes. So how long does it take for sesamoiditis to get better? It takes a long time. We're talking about 50% improvement in about six weeks. Healthier people will be quicker, but we're talking about chronic sesamoiditis where people have crippling pain at work. So it does take six weeks to get better. So it takes six weeks to get 50% better. And then I usually find at about three months, about 75% better, but that's a ballpark. If you do all this stuff, it should get better a little bit quicker. If you have other big toe joint problems, click on the guide above. It will help you find other reasons why you have big toe joint pain.